Hello folks, welcome to another video. This will be a Freeware Friday episode featuring the aircraft on your screen. Nice looking aeroplane. This is the Sukhoi Superjet. Russian aeroplane. I'm not flying it in Russia. And yes, I have given consideration to whether I should even feature a Russian design aeroplane on my channel considering the havoc that uh, Russia is bringing to the world although to be fair it's really the uh, a, a select few people at the top of the uh, the Russian hierarchy who are enabled by a few thousand others and all of the people actually doing the dirty work on the ground there in Ukraine and threatening to take it beyond the Russian population in general I don't have an issue with what's happening with our door here why is it open that's a mystery so this is the Sukhoi the uh, the super jet little regional jet I guess you'd I guess that's the category it fits into I quite like the look of it it kind of looks like that the A220 Airbus A220 and is that coming to the sim is there someone doing a payware A220 somewhere or have I... Is that just a dream? I don't know. Anyway, folks, this is freeware. Uh, it's a one-man band. This aircraft originated back in FS 2004, would you believe it? So that's a while ago. That's 18 years ago as I filmed this video. And then it got sort of ported across to FSX, and now it's here in this sim. Um, so it's not a native... Um, Microsoft 2020 product and it comes with a pretty big catch right so it look from the outside it looks like a Sukhoi from the inside yeah not so much let me jump inside for you bring back memories folks looks a lot like an A320 doesn't it it's because the virtual cockpit is from the A320 and this aircraft also uses the fly-by-wire thing. I guess a stable version of that thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's A320 inside. <laughs> you uh, you think you're flying an A320. So, bear that in mind as this video unfolds. I've got no real reference in terms of how Sukhoi Superjet flies. Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, a stab in the dark and say I reckon this is gonna feel very much like an A320 to me, uh, purely in terms of what I'm looking at. It's it's kind of hard to look past it. The Sukhoi uh, panel VC quite different to this in real life, but it is freeware, and I think if we're expecting a custom panel for an aircraft like this. Uh, in a freeware product so we're probably kidding ourselves so set your expectations accordingly suspend your disbelief it is simulation folks you need to use your imagination a little bit um let me tell you where we are i'll show you where we are and where we're going on today's journey so central america is our area of ops for this flight folks we begin our journey in mexico city specifically Benito Juarez International in Mexico City and we're going to be traveling in a southeasterly direction uh, across Mexico of course Guatemala uh, El Salvador somewhere down here and then into Honduras and our destination is an airport that's pretty well known uh, in the flight sim community being Toncontin International Mike Hotel Tango Golf here in the city of oh jeez <laughs> you're a better man than I if you can pronounce that Teguisialpa did I get that even remotely close I don't know folks that's where we're going um yeah journey time of around about two hours or so but that's based on the A320 profile which is probably pretty similar to the to the Sukhoi 
Lord knows the VC is remarkably similar to what we're seeing in the Sukhoi. That's today's flight, folks. Um, Freeware Friday is pretty simple. Freeware Friday is um, my way of showing appreciation to our freeware development community. Uh, it's a one-man band behind this aeroplane. Um, and uh, on behalf of the community, thank you, mate, for the work that you've done in making it available for the sim. I'm going to get us started out onto a runway. We'll go flying. Won't be a long video from this point, folks. Um, there's not a lot to show you. You kind of know what you're getting. It's an A320VC. Looks like a Sukhoi from the outside. I'll make some commentary en route in terms of how it flies, my opinion for what it's worth, and that'll be the video done. Now let's go flying. All right, lined up runway two, three left, Mexico City, folks. Let's do it. Spool them up, boys. Oh, didn't need to quite go that far. Man flex, SRS runway, and all that other Airbus crap. Flaps not in takeoff config. Yes, they are. <laughs> don't know what's going on there. Anyway, don't mind me. V1's coming up pretty quickly and rotate. Where we go. Well, she wants to go. Feels very much like an A320. Positive brake gear can come up. Now, runway heading for a bit. We're already through flat retraction speed. <laughs> she wants to go. Climb, which is there, continuing to accelerate, left hand turn towards our first waypoint, which is about seven miles behind us. Uratov, to be precise. Take a view out at the side, look overlooking Mexico City. Don't get to fly in this part of the world that often either. Been doing a little bit of flying lately in unfamiliar locales unfamiliar aeroplanes which put those two things together folks with my general incompetence and well you can guess what the result is it's not textbook flying and if you're uh, if you come to this channel looking for quality instructional content you're in a bit of trouble we're busting through 250 below 10 but we're above 10 so we're good we'll just continue that turn around towards Ertov take care of the ground spoilers we've got some rain here the weather's a bit a bit dreary looking to get above that fairly quickly Ertov rolling out around about 070 something like that continuing the climb geez we're getting along all right 290 indicated Ertov, oh, Ertov 060 something like that in fact, once we roll out, get Georgie doing his thing, why are we not in, why are we in open climb for? We're in managed climb. Yeah, okay, we should have pulled the standard barrow. How do we go, that one? 370, managed, no, not that one. What am I doing? Click spot, where are you? It's the other way, is it? No? Holy crap. <laughs> Where's the bloody click spot for managed managed climb? What's happening here? What are we doing? What is happening? If I go downstairs and I go direct PBC for example. Let's go there. Okay, so we're in nav mode, autopilot. There we go. I think that's right. <laughs> Close enough. Up through 17 and a half. I know I have to 370, folks. The weather is getting better. As we depart Mexico City, there she is. I, I really like it. I like the look of it. Oh, it looks like a Sukhoi on the outside, on the inside, which is an A320. Maybe we should call her the Franken-Sukhoi. 
almost sounds like a derogatory term in a foreign language. Frankensukoi. Hey, the sounds are. What's going on with the sounds? Hmm. Might jump back inside <laughs> for the rest of the flight. From in here, folks. I'll see you probably in the cruise uh, briefly, and then for an approach into um, that place that I couldn't pronounce down there in uh, Honduras. Right, so safely established in the cruise, folks. Flight level three seven zero here in our Frankensukoi. Let me go back inside. The sounds are from the original version, the best I can tell, as I was saying in the previous segment. Flights in 2004. Um, and as I as I continue this flight and I reflect on the fact that it's an A320 panel in a Sukhoi jet, I am remembered, uh, reminded even, of the Flight Sim 98 days. Yes, Flight Sim 98. That's going back a while. I remember flying, I can't remember the details, but I remember flying for a, a, a virtual airline, a VA back in the day. I pan around and give myself something to look at as I waffle on. Um, a virtual airline, and I remember you had to start your career with this VA on the Beach 1900. And Flight Sim 98 we used to have uh, 2D panels, bear that in mind. So the Beach 1900, and I think you had to fly something like 10 hours, and then you graduated. And then you were qualified to fly the A320, or the 737. And uh, for some reason, I've never really been a 737 guy. I, cho I chose to fly the A320 for this virtual airline. I wish I could remember the name of it. Um, and my route, you had to, you had to uh, bid, essentially bid for routes, and, and my route was... LAX to Vegas and back. <laughs> I used to do the, the return trip in the A320, or the A320 that we had in Flight Sim 98. I don't think I was even flying with a bloody a joystick, let alone a yoke or, or a throttle quadrant or pedals or anything like that. I think it was all mouse and keyboard, right? But I, what I did was, flying the the Beach 1900 had a 2D panel which looked nothing like the real beach panel but I liked it I got used to it it was really functional right so I just adapted it for the A320 as my dog decides that he doesn't want to hear this story but I'm gonna tell it anyway mate all right um, yeah so I adapted it for the A320 panel so I used to fly this Frankenstein bloody aircraft just like I'm doing today uh, back and forth between LAX and Vegas, same route, same runways. <laughs> Bloody boring when I when I re reflect on it. But at the time, it was kind of uh, I don't know. I kind of felt like I was doing something meaningful. <laughs> and all these years later, here I am. Well, things have changed a little bit. I mean, '98. Do we have the net? We think we had the internet back then, didn't we? Dial-up sort of stuff. But there was none of that sort of, uh, it was all the honour system, you know, you'd have to basically keep a track of your flying yourself and and I think you could lodge, lodge a form, you know, and somewhere someone kept a, a database <laughs> that you could access via the site, how many hours you've done and your route and all that sort of stuff, your routes and what you were yeah, type rated on and all that sort of stuff. And now people take it really seriously, right, that whole thing. And of course we have online networks like VATSIM, etc, Pilot Edge, um, we have streaming ortho scenery, we have 3D cockpits, we have, and the peripherals we have today, just incredible. I mean, you know, some, some people watching this channel may have actual home cockpits, you know, genuine, you know, mounted panels and multi-screens and all that sort of stuff, you know. And, and yes, I am suitably jealous if that's one of, if you fit that mould. <laughs> I don't quite. I have a pretty bloody ordinary setup uh, compared to a lot of people, but I'm very pleased with what I have. I feel very fortunate. Um, but yeah, it was just, just this flight. It just triggered that sort of memory. 
And as I look down towards my uh, faithful companion here, who tried very hard to stop me from telling that story, I got it done anyway, mate, despite you. That's determination. That's resilience, mate. I've been in this game a bloody long time. Eh? Anyway, folks, I'll see you for the approach.